Remember, this entire manga and every manga on this channel is hand drawn by myself. And now you too can learn exactly how to make your own viral Dragon Ball mangas at www.makemanga.com where you can learn directly from me. My mangas have got me on TV, on newspapers and even earned me over $60,000 a month on Patreon alone. And now you can click the link in the description and pinned comment of this video and do it yourself. You only need to see the website to see just how many thousands of you are taking this opportunity right now. And don't forget also, the next video to this Ultra Vegito series has already been made and is live now on my Patreon right now for over 4,500 of you incredible fans to watch after this. Again, links are in the pinned comment and description. Enjoy. <laughs> so our story continues with a view of both Vegito the God Killer and Vegeta, the Prince of All Saiyans. Now both fully transformed, with the latter being triggered suddenly by the transformation of Vegito. With the God Killer himself, with his hands on his hips and an overpowering grin, letting out... Well, this is a surprise! Tapping further into Luce's power affected you too, huh, Vegeta? I guess we're more similar than I thought, after all. An unprecedented turn of events, but I'm not complaining. And Vegeta, cracking his knuckles, would just intuitively respond... <laughs> Neither am I! My true demon form only came from Lucif anyway. So I guess me and you are a two-for-one bargain now. What? Ah! Shocking both of their opponents in the Grand Prix die and the alternate timeline god of destruction for Universe 7, Goku. As the Dai Shinken, with a truly bewildered look, would open his blank eyes wide and mutter, This cannot be! Two Lucifs are here! That energy, it's one in the same! While Destroyer Goku, with a similar look, would think, Vegeta, what am I sensing right now? But as Dai would think more deeply, more and more shock would wash over him, as he would realize... That fool! That darkness I now see running across his body! There's no doubt about it! That is Lucy's body itself! Spreading and taking over! The vessel exchange has begun! And he's doing it from within! How and why is this Saiyan allowing this? Does he not understand? This is irreversible! <laughs> Cry more, little brother! And behind the father of all angels, the devil himself, Lucif, would be seen laughing maniacally. As it seems, all his plans seem to be going to fruition. <laughs> Die! You have that blue look on your face again! I wonder why. While in stark contrast, a cackling and laughter god killer would care less about whatever the priest was worrying about and say, you don't seem to be as talkative as usual. Could you be scared right now by any chance? Come on, you can tell me. You can tell your dear elder brother. <laughs> but Dai, now looking into his palms, remembering his own monstrous strength that he displayed last chapter, would just reply in contempt. Elder brother, I sense that was meant to be a joke. 
but you are unaware of what is happening to you right now. Naive, silly mortal. You do not understand that you are by all accounts now just a ticking time bomb of Lucif's return. That blackness on your arms and now body is no design feature. Look at your chest. That uneven parasitic mark is not remaining still. It's spreading, you damn Saiyan. There is no going back for you now. Just like all those centuries ago, who I will ultimately defeat again will be my elder brother, not you. <laughs> Nonsense. But Vegito, actually hearing this, would then look down at the mark on his chest and begin to see that the mark was indeed not remaining still. Slowly moving across, albeit at the pace of a snail. But Vegito's main gripe would be with something else he would have heard. Commenting, uh, <laughs> I guess this is strange. But what do you mean there's no going back? I've used plenty of this Red Freak's power before, and deactivated and powered down to base at will whenever I need it. Huh. I can just show you now. <coughs> no! But suddenly, as Vegito would presumably attempt to do so, he would notice things would not be as easy as he thought as his own body would no longer respond and no longer go back to base. <laughs> that conniving rat! And realizing this, though angry, Vegito would almost come to terms as he would comment, Lucif, he knew this would happen. He made me think Dai was the one playing me. But it was him all along! But it's not like there was much choice for me anyway. Either die by the little brother's hand, or accept his creepy brother's help to survive. Supposedly unleashing a greater evil than what these gods have already done for millennia! <laughs> I think I'll take my chances with that one. <laughs> but Dai, who would be far less calm with the situation, would immediately begin lifting his arms with a grimace, as both would become coated in a divine white lightning, and the god would let out. Yes, take your chances and release a great evil that would slaughter countless mortals for sport over our actions against just your loved ones. Your short-sightedness knows no bounds, but what I am most disappointed in is your lack of pride. I thought you Saiyans would forcibly rely on your own strength and that Lucif was just wasting his time. But I was wrong. I should have known better than to think anything of such a pitifully primitive species. <laughs> Cold words, die. But Vegito, who would continue to just fold his arms, would soon begin to look to the side of the priest and just reply ominously, But you should know better to talk down of the Saiyans, especially to Saiyan royalty. You need to learn to better survey your surroundings. You never know who might be just behind you. <gasps> As suddenly, with his cryptic clue uttered, the Grand Priest would immediately turn around, only to see without a hint of presence, Vegeta would be behind. And not just that, but with his fist already pulled back, and with no fear now of being so close 
to the all-powerful priest. <laughs> and with an emotionless look, as if this were no effort at all for the prince, in his new form, with his blood-red eyes, he would just stare back and say briefly, No blue half-man following the orders of a toddler should be saying anything of pride. And just like that, with immense power, clearly greater than what we had even seen from Vegito previously, Vegeta would land a fist flush on Dai's cheek, almost breaking his neck as it overextends and stretches on impact. Ultimately flying forward like a rocket for immediate crash landing with a nearby structure. <laughs> and now practically feeling the immeasurable power now at his fingertips, even the prince would begin to start to reflect. So, this is what Vegito had been feeding on all to himself. This is the true power of Lucid. I can see why. This is nothing like the true demon form I had earlier. This energy, it feels right. Falling into the hands of evil for the sake of power. I can't say it isn't something I've experienced before. As behind Vegeta, you would recall having the same dilemma Vegito had, but back in the Boo Saga, where he too chose the dark side for the sake of meeting his end goal. What? <gasps> Master die! But while Vegeta would watch on at his destruction, both God Goku and GT would be utterly perplexed that the previously weaker than both of them prince would now suddenly be able to attack the priest of all people and seemingly get the better of him also. <laughs> Stay away from him! You're mine! But it wouldn't be long before the god of destruction would rush in at Vegeta, either from the disrespect of his opponent leaving for another or out of protection for the Grand Priest, who had been his master in the past timeline. <laughs> Stay in your lane, weakling. But with a violent undertone, Vegeta would display almost no interest, still looking away while his body automatically would begin to move at super speed until... In brutal fashion, Vegeta would appear right in front of Goku in an instant and pushing his elbow forward would strike hard onto the destroyer's face, deforming it instantly as his cheek concaves inwards and he screams in pain. All the while, not as much as a smirk would be seen on the demonic prince. <laughs> the powered up attack of course, making destroyer Goku lose all control, flying far off into the distance. <laughs> but the god would still be in the game and soon flip his body to stabilize. <laughs> The cheetah! But not before lifting his head and displaying clearly now just how damaged he really is. His left cheek now severely swelling, his eye shut and blood dripping down uncontrollably from both his nose and mouth. As he would grunt, he's changed. His strength has gone through the roof. I could barely see him coming. Vegeta, did you always have this up your sleeve? 
Why play with me? And with his questions receiving no answer, Destroyer Goku would begin making his next offense. All the while, Vegeta continues to remain unbothered by his threat. <laughs> Soon appearing right in front of Vegeta to get his attention by force, with his right leg pulled back before... <laughs> with a wicked roundhouse kick, Destroyer Goku would land on Vegeta. But unfortunately, only for the prince to then grab on time while not moving back at all. Looking his fearful victim in the eye, as all Goku can do is panic in the moment until... What? In a violent and brutal scene straight out of Mortal Kombat, Vegeta would callously slam his elbow down, directly on the shin of Goku, snapping his leg in half instantly with so little effort as if it were a plank of wood. All the while, the god of destruction Goku would just open his eyes and mouth wider than ever before as he readies himself to unleash a blood-curdling scream we would have never ever heard from the Saiyan. Vegeta! And once the adrenaline and shock would wear off, that scream would come with unimaginable intensity. Uh, what? And it would seem as though connected, even Seraphim Goku would be affected and partially traumatized by the event, looking at the brutality and just thinking, The cheetah! What are you? But the warrior spirit of the past timeline Goku would still remain. And instinctively, he would quickly find his way back to create some distance. While Vegeta would just stare back coldly, not even saying a word. His arms still held in position like a zombie. <laughs> you pay for that! <laughs> And now angered and losing his cool, under the intense pain, the destroyer would lift his arm up wildly and yell, DESTRUCTO! As in a callback to an old bold friend, a powerful and razor sharp spinning energy formation would appear right on his palm. DISC! Yeah! And just like that, aiming to slice Vegeta in half for what he did to his leg, Goku would then throw the Destructo Disc at full speed. So fast, it would literally change shape in motion, resembling more a sign. Ready to... In a shock move, ready to be literally caught in the bare hand of the still unflinching Vegeta, as if just catching a frisbee. Pathetic Kakarot! As suddenly, not even showcasing the slightest bit of damage, like shattering a plate, the Destructo Disc would be crushed within the palm of the Prince instantly separating into shards of vanishing energy particulate. Uh, how? Leaving the god stunned and with his eyes barely able to comprehend what he is seeing, he would just be left wondering, uh, What? What the hell has happened to you? This isn't Vegeta. This is... The ascension I have always deserved. The victory over the low-class warrior that I always should have had. That is what has happened to me, Kakarot. <laughs> ah! 
as less stun, Destroyer Goku would hear a response, but not from in front, but scarily from right behind him. <laughs> and from a shadowy presence, Vegeta would of course appear like the Boogeyman, right behind the God of Destruction, not uttering a word, as a blue hue would come across Goku's face. Paralyzed by Vegeta's killer intent and presence alone. <laughs> and without even a moment for Goku to turn around, the prince would just slam his leg straight onto the backside of his bow, sending Goku flying back down, still with his broken leg and all. <laughs> eventually leaving the destroyer to pitifully fall to the ground and faceplant with barely any energy to soften the impact. <laughs> I can't let it end like this! But with the same conviction for revenge within him that Vegito has, with all his might, even with broken bones, he would continue to push, unable to accept defeat. But none of this would matter in the face of the prince, who would soon arrive close by landing. Instantly then grabbing the god by the hair like a mere doll, snapping his head up. As looking down almost disappointed, he would comment, you should have never turned your back on your fellow Saiyans, Kakarot. It is a shame I didn't exist in your timeline. Maybe if I did, I could have saved you. But if you choose to live like a god, then you will die like one too! As brutally the Demonic Prince's next move would be to knee at full force, Goku's vulnerable chin, sending his head immediately flying upwards, and noticeably his eyes rolling to the back of his head, as if now instantly unconscious. <sighs> and in the very next panel, there would be some truth to that as now switching trajectory back into the sky like some sort of ping pong ball. When we zoom in closer, the poor, beaten and profusely bleeding Goku would now finally be back in base, having lost all his energy by now, just attempting to survive. <laughs> what a dream! So this is what it feels like to be the superior Saiyan! And Vegeta, now noticing the signs of complete defeat with his long-standing rivalry, he could not help but give off a massive grin, as it now becomes apparent just how much he is enjoying the taste of victory. <laughs> <laughs> As in a barrage of varied attacks in an assault that lasts minutes, Vegeta would go from punching Goku across the face, blasting him with energy beams, and even slamming him mid-air directly on his spine. And eventually, the end result would be seen as a curiously silent Saiyan falling to the ground with a crash and not even uttering a peep. <sighs> Until we would finally see the face of the past timeline Goku, indistinguishable from the face of an already dead warrior. But nonetheless, Vegeta would come down once more to collect his prey. Immediately grabbing Goku by the throat tightly as blood spurts out 
from his frothing mouth. Until eventually lifting the lifeless body into the air by its neck, still with no sign of sound. As with a sadistic grin, as if truly happy to see the death of Son Goku, the lucif powered Vegeta would let out... I think this battle is now over. Don't you agree, Kakarot? It's a shame the Vegeta of your timeline never got to experience a feeling like this. The feeling of crushing low-class scum by the hands of the true elite. But rest assured, he is welcome to live vicariously through me. While Vegeta's opponent would now be defeated, Seraphim Goku would still be dealing with the almighty power of the Royal Commander GT, as he unloads a barrage of punches that Goku can do nothing but block against. <laughs> Damn it! And the frustration would be clear once we peered closer at Goku's expression as with his teeth gritted and his arms covered in bruises and scratches, he would think internally, I'm getting nowhere like this! I need to get him off me! Before his seraphim eyes would now start to glow and he would mutter finally, And I need to catch up to Vegeta! <laughs> And just like that, Goku would unleash all his frustration, erupting into a powerful power-up, sending his divine aura outwards from every pore of his skin. To the point, GT must cover himself as he is forced back. And as the roar becomes more and more intense, so too would the aura and energy emanating from Son Goku, as Cyan Lightning 2 would emerge, pushing GT even further back. With the Raw Commander just grunting, <laughs> Enough with the over theatrics, mortal! <laughs> but with his distance created, the overjoyed and proud Goku would turn around quickly, noticing that Vegeta had finally defeated his opponent, as he would yell with a smile, Right on! You did it, Vegeta! Guess you finally got to say you beat me, huh? Now hurry and let Vegeta absorb him. I'm sure he could use his energy. And then, you could help me and... Seraphim Saiyan could even finish his cheerful encouragement. In a shock move, Vegeta would let go of Destroyer Goku's hair and instantly blast his face point blank with a beam of energy, never before seen so powerful from the Prince. As he would then turn to Seraphim Goku, losing his smirk, and say coldly, we have enough Kakarots as it is. No need for any more dead weight weaklings. Huh? What? As witnessing the brutal death of Destroyer Goku right before their eyes, both Seraphim Goku and GT would be left stunned at what the aftermath of what they would be looking at would be with the Royal Commander commenting, No! What? How barbaric are you swines? <sighs> and Goku, now completely flabbergasted, would remain silent at first, before finally muttering, But Vegeta, what have you just done? was beaten already! Why? Why? 
as completely psychotically, not respecting the life he had just taken, Vegeta would then drop instantly the body of God Goku. The extent of his damage, now not known until... Until in a truly horrific scene, never to be repeated ever again in Dragon Ball, Son Goku is seen with half his head now completely decapitated. Erased instantly, a pool of crimson red blood would be leaking out, creating a gruesome puddle of the once hero of Universe 7, albeit in the past. <laughs> Kakarot! And like a maniac on the prowl, it would seem Devil Vegeta would still not be finished with making things as dark as possible. As soon, stepping on the literal blood of Son Goku, <laughs> he would giggle like a freak as he would bend down, extending his arm until... Inexplicably! Vegeta would place the tip of his two fingers into the now cold blood. For what? Who knows? Hmm. Kakarot! Before yelling now at our original Goku, the only one left now, as he would say, This is the only help you'll be getting from me, clown! This is your battle! BLOOD BULLETS! And suddenly, out of nowhere, seemingly using the blood on his fingertips, Vegeta would blast into the sky a dark red beam of energy, one aimed seemingly at Goku. <gasps> Shocking the Saiyan as he is forced to think fast in the moment. <laughs> Just in the nick of time, with the help of his seraphim reactions, Goku would dodge, but only for GT, who is unluckily right behind him, to then have to deal with it instead. And unfortunately, with not exactly enough time to react. What? And violent. Like it would have gone through anything, it would pierce straight through the right shoulder of the Royal Command, like he were a piece of paper, entering and exiting through the same wound. <laughs> You're welcome! As Vegeta would then quickly turn his back to face where Vegeta was and say to Goku ominously, this is your mess, and you shall deal with it. If you die, then so be it. But I have better things to do. A, a little, little brother, brother to, to annihilate. annihilate. Huh? Little brother? Immediately catching the attention of the Seraphim Saiyan, who begins to realize that his former rival may no longer be who he thinks he is, as he would just mutter, V- Vegeta? No! Are you? <laughs> but elsewhere on the battlefield, Devil Vegito would finally be seen again. His arms folded patiently as he observes closely the situation and change in Vegeta. Thinking internally... I said earlier that I wasn't complaining about Lucif increasing Vegeta's power. But now that I think about it, does that clown even have the willpower to push him back and stay in control? Lucif, just what are you planning? But soon enough, in the mountainous rubble formation from which Dai was smashed into, a rumble would be heard. Before all of a sudden, lights would break free in all directions from within the cracks and crevices until... 
<laughs> With a mighty roar, a certain deity would explode out in an onslaught of near endless cyan energy. <laughs> and not happy at all, Die of course would be seen levitating amongst the now flattened destruction. Still with a bruise on his cheek from Vegeta's earlier attack, a grumble coming from him now as if all he knows is rage, as he would mumble, You! <coughs> but as soon as he would emerge with no fear, Two pairs of feet would appear right in front of him. They of course, being both Vegito and Vegeta. Now both Lucif enhanced, and without a worry in the world about facing the likes of the Grand Priest. As Vegito would comment with a smirk, Hey! Since we're supposedly Saiyans with no pride, we may as well fight two on one for this guy, don't you think, Vegeta? <laughs> to which the prince, cracking his knuckles in anticipation, would just respond, smiling back. I think you may be right, Vegito. Though, at this point, I wouldn't be surprised if I was enough all by myself. Don't get cocky, Saiyan! But a confused Dai would soon wonder what the second Saiyan was even doing there, as he would ask, You got lucky sneaking behind me. How that destroyer let you go, I don't know. But where even is he? Don't tell me that other Saiyan is fighting both him and GT! Needing to die, then obliviously just turning his head around in an attempt to find his pupil from the past until... What? He would of course see the tragic and bloody sight of a dead god. The destroyer beheaded and still to this moment pouring out blood. <laughs> And like he had just been shot in the heart, time would almost slow down for Dai, as seeing such a horrific state of a fellow god, a divine individual, would break something internally, like something had snapped. This is the evil of Lucif! This is why I must win! As with his voice now going several octaves deeper, a truly dead look would come across the Grand Priest's face until... In a ferocious roar of power, Dai's body itself would seemingly become pure energy as thunder burst from every section of his body from his arms to his legs and from even his eye sockets resulting in a gigantic aura and tornado of wind around him all before the two god king <laughs> Causing each to cover themselves from the immense pressure and pushback. But Vegeta, showing signs of annoyance, or the fat and thirsty Vegito, would somehow let off a smile, looking on closely with his seraphim arm. And as his monstrous transformation continues, it would be like nothing seen ever before, as Dai's body would soon forcibly grow and extend, becoming several feet taller, 
the symbol on his forehead morphing into violent energy also as he grits his teeth and changes its shape while the same would be seen on his chest too where the once upside down triangle would now become a diamond and with his growth in height, so too would his hair grow also. But not in spikes, but rather relax. As his angel wing on his right side would then suddenly collapse and begin wrapping around his arm as well. And for his left, the fallen wing, removed by Lucif earlier, would instantly fling towards him and begin wrapping around his left arm in the same fashion. <laughs> and with his transformation nearing its completion, Dai's eyes would appear initially blank. The diamond symbol now finally formed on his forehead and glowing cyan. His arms now coated in a feather-like material. His feet barefoot now, with his legs bursted through from his trouser ends after his rapid growth. And behind, the circular ring which would accompany him would now become energy too. And begin stretching wider and wider as in tandem with Dai's body. And finally, now completely transformed, Dai, the one true angel, would appear in his final form. Now taller than Broly, his ring behind him several times larger, his arms white and coated in angel wings, his hair long, his symbols now switched to cyan diamond. Your energy of untold levels would emanate all around him, like some sort of force field, almost as if it were infinite. All this while his eyes remain closed and no sound is uttered until... Welcome! With his eyes finally open, he would reveal the completed Seraphim form. His entire eye now fully succumbed to the power of the Seraphim. Completely cyan and now all seeing. As with a calm demeanor, he would continue. Welcome to the final act. This same form is what I used to defeat my brother millennia ago. And it will be what marks your graves also. <laughs> but in response, Vegito and Vegeta would be unintimidated. Their confidence steadfast as each would get into fighting stars with the few Saiyan saying to his counterpart, This is what I sensed all this time hiding within him, Vegeta. This is where things get real. Keep control and follow my lead. Got it? To which Vegeta would then say back, who made you in charge? Say no. But that was it for today's video, guys. And if you made it this far, leave me a hashtag Goku in the comments down below. And let me know what on earth you think you're seeing in this short preview. Or just find out what happens right now on my Patreon, where you can see the full next video. Fully voice acted, soundtracked, and edited for you to enjoy with over 4,500 plus other fans, as well as getting access to 250 plus other fan mongers too. It's the deal of the century.